Next to torture, art persuades most. The quote comes from George Bernard Shaw and is a favorite of a person who knows something of both torture and art. And while her work belongs to the world in both public and private art collections, her suffering for the most part is her own. A profile of the artist Jenny Ruffner from reporter Julie Blacklow. Okay, I want you to bring it a little lower. Push. More and more and more, I'll help you. Ginny Ruffner is an artist at work. And we'll add just a little bit of weight. Uh -huh. Trying with a ferocious determination to make the left hand she used to paint with do what she wants it to do. Let go, now. let go. And an equally recalcitrant voice say what she wants it to say. I tell you this how rehab process makes art making look like a piece of cake. Ginny Ruffner is among the world's top artists in the uncommon field of glass sculpture. Her work sits in the Metropolitan Museum of Art and other world-famous collections. It is coveted, expensive, wonderfully different, and fragile. Not unlike its creator. Four years ago, already an internationally recognized artist, while visiting her South Carolina home, another car hit Ruffner head-on in a devastating crash. In non-medical parlance, her brain was jolted around inside her skull. Her family told to tie up her business affairs, and she lapsed into a five-week coma. It was awful. I feel like I escaped prison when I got out. Escaped prisoner? Yeah. You kind of swim back into consciousness. Mm -hmm. It's a long process. As I therapy, the hospital staff I gave her cans of corn and beans to sort until she began to remember who and what she was. I told them I'm an artist, and they gave me some pain. Her friend, New York artist Steve Kirsch, helped her remember what to do with it. <laughs> They'd been dating a year when the accident happened, and Kirsch made his own life-changing decision to stick with her. I surprised myself. In what ways? Uh, just that I could do this. That uh, you could. It's uh, it's a sacrifice. It takes every bit of you to uh, to go through it. You know, to to go through it all the way. Yeah, it was it they called me for five weeks, and then in the house. For five months. You know, everybody says, Jesus, how do you do it? You know, I could never do that. But it was, you know, it's just what you're doing. It's it's because becomes, you not have done it. It was the only thing to do. Yes, it was the so, only thing to do. And my God, compared to what Ginny had to do, I mean, it was nothing. It was a walk in the park. If they wanted me to do something, they would tell me, oh, Ginny, you can't do that. It's too hard. But it's extremely negative. The answer to everything is no. She'll never this, she'll never that. You know, and first it was she'll never wake up, and then she'll never, you know, she'll never think straight. She'll never have the mind of an adult. She'll never talk. She'll never... And many people thought Ruffner would never and could never make art again. I'll, I'll explain this piece again. But now back in the Seattle loft, where she lived among her blenders and clocks and her own creations before the accident, Ruffner has forged um, okay. a new way of doing things. Uh, these things here we can do, like wood with pencil. With wood grain. Wood grain, yeah. Relying on the skills yeah. of others to help bring her art to life. Her whimsical take on the world. This is the internet, just in case you wonder about this. <laughs> Proof that that intangible thing, where art comes from, survived. I, was, I am very hard-headed. It is a good thing because if I wasn't so hard-headed, my brain would have been squished. Oh, uh, That's why she's um, back, because she's so feisty. You know? She's feisty. Oh, man. Uh, I have 
three alter egos. Three alter egos? A cat, a Martian, and a frog. Her alter egos appear throughout the work for a reason. I chose them because they're all decidedly non human and they're alien because it's analogous to how I feel like an alien in this wheelchair. And they're all beings that we associate with intelligence. Which and is I what perhaps galls Ruffner the most, that yes. her mind and body travel at such different speeds. When you're not a biped, it makes you feel very strange. People respond to you totally differently in a wheelchair. Nonetheless, Ruffner keeps moving the best way she can. Ready? It's going to be your shot. Let's go. Any shot. Celebrating the end of a two-week teaching stint with Steve Kirsch at the Pilchuck Glass School north of Seattle. Ready? Oh, man, I learned how to be patient. I learned how to be patient. I learned how to really care about stuff, about... Uh, about little things, about the tiniest little things, because at the at the outset, the the littlest things were the biggest uh, rewards. You know, when Jenny woke up, she could move her thumb and her eyes, and that's all she could move. She could move her thumb on her right hand and her eyes, and that was it. And so when she could move her arm, that was a pretty big step. Right. All the way up. It is almost four years since Ginny Ruffner was forced off a South Carolina freeway. And in that time, she has defied every dark prognosis, a fact which, no doubt, amuses her. <laughs> she is not yet finished proving people wrong. <laughs> um, I'm not afraid to die now because I feel like been there, done that. In many ways, her friends say she is the same Ginny she always was, measured by her art and by her indefatigable, indomitable approach to life. Art is not a job. It's not what you do, it's who you are. So, uh, quite frankly, I really couldn't do anything else. <laughs> so. Not yet. Uh, yeah.